City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> that miserable old coyote, Mr. Dillon. Did you hear him? <laughs> yes, I heard him, Chuck. Uh, we gonna stop in as long, Brian? Oh, there's no reason to. It's late. It's too quiet for anything to be going on. Well, uh, what I was thinking, I sure could do with some beer to go to bed on if anybody was buying. <laughs> All right. Come on. The place does sound kind of like a morgue tonight, don't it? Well, it won't the end of next month when the trail herds start rolling in. Mm-hmm. You'll be lucky to get your foot in, son. Been waiting for you, Marshal. Get your hands up. Well, I... Yeah, sure, Red. I won't argue with a shotgun. <laughs> That's what we figured. Take his gun, Red. Yeah. You, you don't mind, do you, Marshal? Ah, go ahead. Do what Hack says. He's the one who gives the orders, the way I hear it. You shut up, Marshal. Neither one of us gives orders. Huh? I didn't know you boys were in this part of the country. That's far enough, right there. Unless you want to see this little lady here get her pretty looks all spoiled. Matt, I... I tried to think of some way to get word to you. That's all right, Kitty. Just take it easy. Yeah, that's the idea, Marshal. You too. Just take it easy. Everything will be all right. You got what you came after, Hack, or are you still trying to get it? We got it. We've been through all the boys' pockets, along with the safe and the cash box. Just fixing to leave when you stumbled in. We didn't have a chance, Matt. They walked in with the shotguns and... Said Kitty would be the first one to go. Forget it, Doug. These boys, Tollett and Slade, are wanted in a half a dozen states for bank robbery, stage holdup, and How murder. How come you were so quick to recognize us, Marshal? We ain't been around here before. No, but your pictures have. You must have slipped into Dodge pretty quiet, huh? <laughs> That's right, Marshal. And gonna slip out the same way. I suppose you line up over there with the rest of the target. Well, <laughs> kind of expected more out of you, Marshal, from what I heard about you. Is that so? Reputation's mighty easy to come by sometimes. All right, all of you. We're riding out of here now. We don't aim to get followed. Red, take her arm, Red. Oh, yeah. Here, what are you doing? Figure you boys won't be so likely to try nothing if you you go along with us away. Matt? Do as they tell you, Kitty. You'll be all right. Anybody pokes his head out this door next few minutes gets it shot off. Same thing will happen to the lady. You keep the boys in line, Marshal. We've got a nice little town here. <laughs> Been a pleasure to visit it. 
Let's go, Rick. What are we going to do, Mr. Dillon? Nothing, Chester. Oh, dang it, Matt. Let's get a posse going. Get some organized here. They took $14 off of me. You just got to stand there. Hold it, Doc. And the rest of you, shut up. Uh, Step it down now. Take it easy and stay away from that door. Matt, we can't just let them ride out. Doc, they got Kitty with them and they're killers. One move from us and they'll do exactly what they said they'd do to her. Well, maybe they will anyway. We'll give her the best chance we're able. That's all we can do. Mr. Dillon. Well, we spent from midnight last night until noon today checking every trail out of Dodge. Till Beale and his scouts have worked the river bottom for ten miles each way. Yes, sir, I know. The whole countryside's on the lookout for them. Two men and a woman. They can't just disappear. Well, they sure done it so far. Yeah, they sure done it so far. Come on, Chester. Let's walk up the street and get something to eat, huh? First time in all my recollection, I ain't had no appetite to speak of. Well, it won't help Kitty. I need to starve yourself. I got kind of a bad feeling there ain't nothing going to help her, Mr. Dillon. Why not? I figure they've had time now to get far enough away. They won't need her no longer. Why don't you shut up? Chester, I'm... I'm sorry I didn't mean to talk to you like that. Uh, I can understand. Yeah, I guess we both do. Well, good afternoon, Matt. You, Chester. Hello, Doc. Uh, did you find any trace of them? No, nothing. You, uh, want to have a bite to eat with us? Well, I just ate about an hour ago, but I, I might sit down with you for some pie and some coffee. Yeah. If Chester can spare a little. <laughs> I ain't thinking much about food today, Doc. Oh, is that so? Well, Chester, if you ever reach my age, you'll realize come fire and brimstone, chaos and calamity. The first thing a man better look out for is his stomach. Yes, sir. As soon as he starts going off his feet, he starts going downhill. You betcha. And when he starts to go down... Well, I sure hope Kitty's all right. We all hope so, Doc. Yeah. The... Hey, that was Kitty. Yes, that was down the street there somewhere. Yeah, come on. No wonder there was no trail. They never even left town. They planned to hole up for a night or two and then ride out after the search was all over. Miss Kitty must have broke loose for a minute, huh? Yeah. Matthews! Matthew. Save it, Miles. There's trouble up the street. That's not up the street. It's right over there in my store. What? Upstairs in the storage loft. Goodbye, Jean. He's right, Mr. Dillon. There's a pane of glass broke out up there. Aye. Yeah. Is there another window in the back, Miles? Aye. Same as the one in the front. I reckon they've seen this all right. Chester, you go cover that back window, huh? Yes, sir. At least she's still alive. Yeah. So far. Certainly mighty quiet up there, Matthew. Nothing to talk about, I guess. Well, they know they can't get out of there. Now dark and we can't get in. Uh, Matt, suppose we set fire to the building. Oh, no, you're not. You're not setting fire to my store. Not if they stay up there for the next year, you're not. They just didn't have Kitty up there with them, and it'd be easy. Uh, sure, just wait for them to starve out. Or else burn the place down. Will you stop seeing that dock? Well, it's going to be dark before long, Matt. Yeah, I know. Uh, why don't they give up? They know they haven't got a chance. They have as long as they got Kitty, Doc. I don't know. Maybe they're finally ready to talk. Hey, Red! Act! Careful, careful, Matt. 
You beat and you know it. Why don't you throw your guns out of that window and come on down? Suppose we throw the lady out instead, Marshal. Look, both of you. If anything happens to her, you know what to expect. And if anything happens to us, she knows what to expect. Why don't you go on home, Marshal? Take that crowd of yokels with you. We can hold out a lot longer than you can up there. But maybe not longer than the lady can. Oh, so help me if I get my hands on his hack. Suppose we get together and talk it over, huh? Maybe we can work something out. Get together how? You aiming to come up here and visit us? Unless you want to meet down here on the street. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, what about it? Come by yourself? Without your gun? Yeah, sure. Anything you want. Yeah, no, wait a second, man. All right, Marshal. Deal yourself in. You gone clean out of your mind, Matt? You know any other way I can get under that storage loft, Doc? Yeah, but without a gun? Why not? Matt, you're just a plain doggone fool. Maybe. But there's times when being a fool's about the wisest thing a man can do. Uh, you're saying this is one of the times? I don't know, Doc. But I sure hope so. Chester, you're supposed to be around there watching that back window. I got Sam Noonan to take over. Well, Mr. Dillon, listen to me now. You just can't do There's nothing else like to do, Chester. Oh, dang it, Matthew. If it'd do any good, I'd say go ahead and burn the place. The stock up there in that loft isn't worth much anyhow. What is up there, Miles? Oh, odds and ends mostly. Stuff I don't need to get at often. The thing that's worth the most is their 20 sacks of concentrates. What do you mean, concentrates? Oh, Black iron pyrites. Powdered. I took them in trade from the Black Hawk mine. Oh? I've been aiming to ship them east to the smelter. They run pretty high in silver. Well, I don't guess Red and Hack will be very interested in sacks of concentrates. Marshal, you lose your nerve? I'll be right with you, Hack. They'll shoot you down for you get halfway across the street. Why, Chester? That's what they're figuring. They can do it a lot easier after I'm there. Mr. Young, I... Yeah, never mind, Chester. Well, good luck, man. Thanks, Doc. You make a mighty fine target down there, Marshal. I'll make a better one at ten feet, Hack. If you can keep your nerve that close. <laughs> you listen to him, Reddy talks real brave, don't we? The stairs is over there to the side, Marshal. I know that. It's my town, Hack, remember? You don't run it too good, you know? I want to hurry up, Marshal, before one of your boys down there gets notion. Are you worried, Red? <laughs> You'll never see the day. Like a little lamb in a loading shoot. Matt, you shouldn't have done it. They're not going to let you out of here. Take it easy, Kitty. I'm sorry, Matt. You all right? You wouldn't have done a fool thing like this if it weren't for me being here. Sure I would have. It's part of my job, Kitty. Teaching boys like these a little respect for the law. Marshal, did you come up here to talk to me or this lady here? What do you say, me, Hack? Doesn't Red even count? Uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I just wonder how long it's going to take Red to learn. What are you talking about? Oh, shut up, Red. He's just trying to start trouble. Well, no, all right. What does he mean? Learn what? You got your orders, didn't you, Red? Heck told you to shut up. I don't take orders from him or nobody else. Red, will you listen? Don't you see what he's trying to do? What? Trying to make bad feeling betwixt us. Talking a pack of lies. He's trying to start us fighting each other. 
Yeah. Yeah, sure he is, sure. You're easy to fool, aren't you, Red? You believe it? All right, that's enough now, Marshal. Just one more word like that, I'll blow you in half. Hack, you haven't got a chance. I thought you'd realize that by There's now. two shotguns against your bare hand says we got a chance. Yeah, but you can't use those guns up here. Huh? Didn't you even bother to take a look at these sacks here? What are you doing there? Just hooking a spur in one of them and ripping it open. You could have done the same thing, Hack. Well, just some black dust of some kind. Here, let's toss some up in the air, huh? Whew. Don't you recognize it? Don't get the air all full of that stuff. Did neither one of you ever work around a mine? Yeah, yeah, I did. Then take a closer look, Red. Don't you know black powder when you see it? Oh, it's blasting powder. This one is, it's gunpowder. No. Now, you better lay those shotguns down easy, boys. You pull a trigger and this whole place will go up in one big blast. You're right, Red. We can't shoot nobody in here. They'll stand a better chance going to trial. Now, that's why you come up here without a gun. All right. I won't use my gun. But we're still two against one, Marshal. Come on, Red, jump him. All right, come on, Red. It's even now, and I'm going to break your neck. No, 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 not me. You win, Marshal. All right, then help Hack onto his feet. I'll take the shotguns along. All right, get moving, Red. Hey, you're holding that shotgun like you was going to use it. Just in case you change your mind. What What? Why didn't you jump him? What's he doing with that gun? Oh, he can't use it no more than we could. Oh, not with all that powder. Well, now, Miles could be wrong. Maybe it is gunpowder. Who? Oh. What are you saying? I know it looks like gunpowder. But if it is, Miles got fooled. He bought it for concentrates. Black iron pyrites. It ain't gunpowder. He fooled us. A liar. How about that? A lawman. And cheats for lying. Yeah, I'm a liar, all right. I'll admit it. But it beats being what you are. All right, now get moving. Down those stairs. Go on. You know, on the front view, you could tell what part of the country a man was from and how he made his living from the saddle he rode. Center fire, three-quarter rig, Cheyenne Road, Mexican, California, or McClellan. The only trouble was, you still couldn't know whether he was out to kill you or not. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Ben Wright, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story on Gun Smoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.